Right, hey guys, girls, welcome back for another video. So, we're going to be test riding and having a first look at the Honda CB1000R 2021 Black Edition. It's absolutely crazy good looking. I can't wait to get on this one. Let's roll the intro, let's go. <laughs> Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am super excited about revealing this one today. Uh, it's brand new for 2021. This is CB1000R, uh, black edition. And when I say black, I mean all black. Like, actually, everything is black on this bike. We've got black plastics from the uh, fly screen at the front. The lights black. Mud guards are black. The wheels are black. You know, all the plastics are black on here. Black radiator. Uh, black headers on there as well um, the, You know the uh, engines black a little bit of chrome on there. Just give a nice little design. It looks cool uh, I don't know if I said the forks the forks are black as well check them forks out all black forks Damn, it's looking sexy uh, As we move around we've got the black anodized sort of uh, radiator guard there as well with embossed CB 1000R in there, but everything's black black tank Looking very smart indeed. We've got black seat. So we've even got the black exhaust end can. Check that, it's all black apart from a little bit of silver, but yeah, that's black. Yeah, it looks smart. Check these wheels out. Very nice wheels. Right, okay, it's a 998cc liquid cooled uh, four cylinder engine which produces about 143 brake horsepower. Uh, it's got 104 Newton meters of torque uh, coming out at 8,250 uh, RPM. Uh, we've got a 16.2 litre fuel tank. That'll do some nice uh, coastal runs here in the UK. And the seat here is 830mm seat type. We're going to take a look at these in a minute when we get back to it. We've got a six speed gearbox with three level quick shifter and auto blipper. Let's go around and have a quick look around this side. Yeah, all very nice looking, all black anodized, and uh, very nice and comfy for your feet on there as well. Okay, moving back to the front of the bike, we've got this sort of horseshoe uh, teardrop uh, front light as well, which is looking very nice in LED. We've got the side LEDs that are on, but this camera's not picking them up. Uh, they do run as daytime running lights as well. Um, right, okay, so looking at the front of the bike, We've got the Showa SFFBP USD front forks, which are completely blacked out, as I said before. I tell you what, they look mean. I really love the look of this bike, everything blacked out. Uh, Tokiko brake calipers. Um, very nice, I've tried them. Very keen on this, it's only done 30 miles since, uh, since we got it in the showroom. And uh, they need braking in, but very nice, very well equipped for this bike. Right, okay, so moving on from the front of the bike a little bit now. Uh, just looking at this tank, this tank's very nice indeed. It's got a nice indentation there as well for your knee to get up and sort of grab the bike while you're riding. And uh, for me, we are sort of sat on this bike a little bit, uh, not sort of in it, you know, and you definitely need them to grab your knees onto. I definitely recommend getting some tank pads on there as well because this uh, black paint looks like it's going to scratch quite easily. But nonetheless, I mean, it's a very beautiful... Uh, tank and it goes with the rest of the bike uh, so moving down a little bit just take a second to have a look at this engine all blacked out looking very very nice 
Right, moving on backwards. So, there's a few changes here. Uh, we've actually put a tail tidy on the back of this bike. And uh, it definitely cleans up the back end of this bike. Very, very nice. Um, there was a bit of a hood here, which I'll stick a picture on as it comes stock, as the tail tidy isn't that added extra. And in my uh, opinion, I think everybody who buys this bike should probably get a tail tidy on here. As I say, I'll stick a picture on as, as it did look stock. Now check these wheels out. I really love the look of these wheels. Uh, Honda says that they are custom looking. <laughs> and uh, I think it completes this bike. Absolutely. Right, I guess taking a look at the uh, seats right now. They are quite hard. Uh, when I sat on it, I wasn't too sure about it at first. But the more I sit in it, the more it sort of grips my back end. And I quite enjoy it. I quite like it. So very easy to take this back seat out. Just key in there. And uh, very easy to take off. Uh, not a lot of space in there. Enough for some tools. Probably not even enough to stick a can of pop in there, in all honesty. But you know, you do get a seat cowl with this as well as this uh, passenger, passenger pillion seat. So if you want to sport it up a little bit, stick the black seat cowl on there. You do get it with it. So take a look at that. Right, okay, so moving on to the front of the bike, we've got a five inch TFT that looks very, very nice. Uh, sorry about the. Uh, GoPro here, but uh, I'm trying my best. You, when you sat on the bike and using your naked eye, everything on here is very, very visible. Now we've got a yellow bar there because it hasn't done its uh, service yet for its 600 miles, so we'll just knock that off and this is what we're looking at. Right, okay, so in this corner, if you can see it, we've got the uh, rear mode on there, user mode, which can uh, change the settings for the brake, traction and the power. Um, sport mode, these are already set, I don't think you can change these and standard mode, which would just technically be road mode back to rear mode, which gives obviously you can see gives you more traction user mode, so you can get a Honda app for your phone which I believe it's for Android only and you can change these on there uh, very easy uh, it does have sat nav uh, through the app as well and it can change with the buttons on here you can change uh, music through your helmet using the uh, Honda app. Now it's all pretty straightforward. There's nothing on here that's not on every other bike. And you've got your horn. Hazards. Let's have a look at hazards. I always have to have a look at them. We don't look at hazards enough, do we? Yes, very nice. Take a check out of that back. Yeah, it looks very good. Right, okay, back to the display. It's looking very neat, very tidy. Some of this writing down here is quite hard to see if you've not got the best eyes. At the moment, we're on trip B. before we go out for a test drive on this uh, if you like this video don't forget to please like subscribe and comment uh, that will really help me out uh, amazingly so thank you for that um, let's go let's go for a test drive let's check it out right okay so first initial thoughts when sitting on this bike actually the seat the seat's quite hard uh, it's hard to sit on um, it's not it's shaped well though, I mean I feel like it's shaped around me properly, it's not like sticking into my legs or anything like that, it's just just quite hard seat, you know what I mean? Um, as far as the leg positioning goes, I do feel quite scrunched up on this, my feet are like, my knees are pulled right into the tank, which is probably a good thing, because I should be able to hold the tank very well with my knees, uh, when cornering and whatnot. My feet are flat on the floor, if you can see that, completely flat on the floor both sides. Yep, all the way down. So if you'd short legs, uh, like a 29-30 uh, inside leg, I think you'd be fine on this bike. If you're a bit taller, yeah, you should be fine. So there is a little bit of an aggressive uh, sort of position on this. I'm sat forward. I do have the uh, weight of my body on my wrist there. And you sat, sat forward with your head forward a little bit as well. But that's quite a mean sort of street, aggressive angle. And... Personally, I like it. I think it suits this bike um, very well. You know, the levers are angled down for that aggressive position as well, so that when your hands 
are angled you know you can grab the clutch grab the brake that's absolutely perfect so to me it suits the style of the bike um i think looking at these mirrors i always have the same issue with me with these mirrors i can never sort of see past uh, you know my elbows very well so for me it's probably a benefit from um some bar end mirrors there absolutely right okay let's have a ride let's have a listen to the engine uh, let's uh, check it out on the roads right don't forget there is a yellow bar there because it's not done its 600 mile service yet it is in uh, neutral gear and we do have it in user mode if you can see that that means full power uh, tracks and controls down to one bar let's try it out in fact let's put it into let's have a look at modes sport mode standard mode see standard mode there has got two powers of bar bar of power two traction electronic brake i think that means is two bar rain mode is full traction one bar of power user mode sport i'm going to keep it in sport mode that's what i'm going to do so we've got full power one bar i think electronic brake and one traction control if that's not electronic brake please let me know in the comments right okay let's check it out first gear we do have a quick shifter on this i may or may not use it as we're going through depending on how it feels uh, straight off the bat the uh, clutch there is nice and easy release yeah that's nice is that actually that clutch it's quite far out it's right at end at bar right okay let's go let's go for a blast right so we're in the other side of Bradford whoa I tell you what this has got power I ain't even got off the end of this side road yet I can already feel power right here okay, we're gonna go up through town so we're gonna have a bit of slow riding and then through a bit of traffic we'll check it out at slower speeds then we're gonna go on to a dual carriageway which I believe is 50 miles an hour so we can open it up a little bit but not too much all right do you know what i'm really liking the position on this bike it feels really good the seat being hard actually i, my, I feel pretty good with it to be fair it's not digging in like i said before it's just i'm just sat on top of it you know i'm not sat in it cheers mate So if you can see on this handlebar, we do have the menu control options there and we also have, let me stop and then I'll show it you. So we do have the menu control options which I keep feeling like that's an indicator, but it's not the indicators below it. stick to speed limit up here I've got my visor down so you shouldn't hear any wind uh, like I said before there's a little bit of traffic up here so let's deal with this traffic let's feel what it's like clutch is a little bit harsh when you first jump on it for the first time I'm sure it's not a problem when you get used to it oh we're back on uh, amber and now we're back on red it's not a problem let's have a play with this clutch Yeah, you see that clutch is right out. To have a two fingers on this, you'd have to have your hand right at the end of the bar to two finger that. It might even benefit from another clutch lever. I can see everything on this dash. Dash is looking quite clean. I said before, some of this writing underneath is quite small. Can't really see date down there too easy. Sounds great, this bike. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yes, that stock exhaust as well. That right. Okay, let's try this clutch again. A little bit of rollback. Oh, my fault. That I think it's quite an aggressive clutch. I think it just needs it needs a couple of minutes just to get used to it. You know, handlebar's quite light as well. It likes to knock into neutral. 
I've been out on it for about an hour already and I've noticed that I knock it into neutral quite a lot. Uh, going down gear, also going up gear. And that's not just using quick shifter, that's not using clutch as well. So yeah, I've just got one hand on bar here and it's kind of wobbling a little bit at front so I don't feel confident doing that so let's get two hands back on bar. So always a test I like to do to uh, see how confident I feel. Can't see anything at all out of my left mirror, that needs adjusting. Yeah, my uh, elbows are absolutely taking over that left wing mirror there. Right one's not as bad. So this CB engineering bit here on the handlebar, I've got a funny feeling, I haven't seen one yet, but you can bet somebody's made like a pivot for your phone there, so you can have your phone in landscape mode, and you just pivot it around. If nobody's made that yet, somebody needs to make it, because that's perfect positioning there for uh, a phone holder, what pivots up and down. But we're just triggering away here at 20 mile an hour. It's, it's all right, actually. I mean, we're not going through traffic, but it's not wanting to aggressively pull off. And the throttle is quite tame so far. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. We are in third gear as well, so we drop it down a gear, so we're in second. Just casually strutting along here in second gear. The car's going right, let's overtake. Back into third. Yeah, nice and smooth gear changing as well there. Second gear, I did use the clutch. Let's have a listen to this engine roar. Oh. oh my god, that sounds good for a stock exhaust. <clears throat> Can you imagine what it sounds like if you pulled a aftermarket exhaust on as well? Right, okay, let's test this clutch out again. Oh, a little bit too much again. I can't help it. I'll get used to it as we get riding. We're in third gear. I've noticed if you look where my hand is, my left hand, so you do have that downward position that's quite aggressive, but your path light, if you see that path light there, that's quite high up. So you have to, if, you, if you've got your hands on the clutch, if you always keep your hands like on the clutch, forward with your fingers over it, you have to take your hand off to put your hand up, you have to bend your hand down to press that path light, you know. It's quite a pain, you think they'd put that at the back, Right, let's put my visor down. We're in fourth gear at the moment. Feels quite smooth. Lots of torque. Sounds aggressive. Feels aggressive. This is a very nice, very nice bike. I've got to say it twice because it is really it's pleasing to look at and it's pre bit pleasing to uh, ride as well. Right, we're having a 40 road, we're in 38. I need to keep checking my speed. <clears throat> We're going with the flow of traffic at the moment. I don't really have loads to say about it really. I like that the reservoir is nice and blacked out on this as well. You know, I could say it'd benefit from a sort of a phone holder there. I think it'd benefit from a larger screen as well, in all honesty. I think it'd give it give it a bit of wind protection where we're going to be going right now. I think we want this right indicator on here, I believe. Yeah, left indicator, oh, let's jump in this left lane. So, like I said before, I keep wanting to hit the menu button, it just feels like an indicator, um, and it, it like, it's nice to push in, push in like an indicator as well. Right, it is 50 mile an hour on here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop back a little bit. There's a wagon behind me. Drop it into third. What are we at now? 30 mile an hour, wagon's not caught up yet. Drop it into second. Right, so 20 mile an hour. Straight up to 50 mile an hour. I tell you what, I can feel that torque. Just use quick shifter there into fourth. Quick shifter again into fifth. Yeah, dead easy. It feels nice and smooth as well, the quick shifter. Just a little tap from your foot. 
no sort of pressure needed really to change gear there. It's only a 50 mile an hour zone here. It's a very, very easy bike to ride. And it gives you that. So we are in fifth there. Slow down a little bit. Gives you enough throttle to want to play, you know. As an absolutely standard stock bike, I absolutely love this bike. There's only a few things that I would do to this, barring mirrors, probably a bit of a larger screen up front instead of that plastic fly screen. Phone holder. Uh, make sure you definitely get a tail tidy up back because they don't come with a tail tidy as stock. I wouldn't even change stock exhaust. Stock exhaust looks great. I've just got one hand now riding along. It's smooth. I feel confident right now. Quite a bit of wind hitting me as well, but nah, not a problem. Cut it through, just nice. Right, we're going to go into nationals now. Drop down into fourth. We're at 40 mile an hour. Straight up to 60, no problem. Straight back into fifth gear. Such a pleasure to ride this bike. When I first sat on it, I felt a little bit scrunched up, but as I sort of sat into it a bit more, relaxed on it a little bit now, you know, got my feet up on pegs in the right position. It's a, it's a very comfortable bike, you know. So a lot of times you go sit on them in test centre and you don't just quite feel right. That's just because you've not got comfy on it yet, you know. I can easily in fifth just pull it back and it sets off. I don't need to down gear. Absolutely full of torque. <coughs> Excuse me. Suspension, let's talk about suspension. Right, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm well over 20 stone, I'm a big dude. Suspension feels fine to me. I don't know if it's come as stock, I don't know if the garage has tweaked it a little bit. I've seen some people complaining about the back suspension feeling a bit spongy. Don't feel spongy at all to me, it feels absolutely spot on. Oh my god, it feels great. Yeah, absolutely loving this bike, guys and girls. If you're wanting a street naked <coughs> and you don't know what to buy, I would absolutely recommend you get to Honda and test ride this CBR1000, CB1000R Black Edition. Uh, they do do other editions that aren't black. But for me, this is all about appearance. You know, this Neo, Neo Cafe Racer, uh, all blacked out. It's style. It's got more style than I have. I'm not a stylish person. I think it's giving me credit. It's helping me along. It's helping my personality. Right. Absolutely amazing bike. really does sound the part what time are we on I've got about another half an hour left on this bike yet I'm not going to be going too much further because it's going to take me another it's going to take me another 20 minutes to get back so just leaving it in fifth nice and steady away in fifth it has got six gears don't feel like I needed it at all just kept enough sort of torque there for me that if I wanted to pull it back I could. Right, we just dropped down into third, we're going to go straight across at this roundabout. Into a 40 zone. Keithley skipped to mode. Right, there's another roundabout, I believe, at the end of here. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn it round at this roundabout. And uh, we're going to head back on where we've just come. Just 
pull my jacket down at back. Right, okay, we're in first. Let's have another listen to that. Oh! It is four here. The need for speed on this bike is uh, incredible, you know, because it's quite aggressive. It's quite talky off the throttle. I apologize. Slow down a little bit. It's quite talky there off the throttle. You, you, feel, you feel like you need to be going sort of faster than what you need, you know, what you need, what you have to be doing on the road. Front suspension is quite nice and firm for me. It's feeling good. Straight into nationals, national speed limit if you're not from UK, that's 60 mile an hour. We've hit that straight away and it sounds great. That grunt from them cylinders rah, sounds amazing. Let's get into the right lane. Looks like it's going to rain here today. There's a big dirty cloud coming over. I really want to spank this bike, but... For test riding this at Honda, the excess, if you crash, is 2,500 British pounds. Damn, that's a lot of money. But I would highly, highly, highly advise going and riding one of these. I think you might be parting with your money to buy one. Especially if you're looking for a street naked. Because that's what it is really, isn't it? It's a street naked bike. You could call it a Neo, Neo Cafe sort of looks all they want, but it is. It's a street naked. I'd love to do a coastal run with this on weekend. Let's jump into the left lane. Yeah, we're clear. Wow. I'm really loving that sort of the sound of that power at low end as it as it comes straight up the rev range. It's quite a little bit of reflection there off TFT. I bet on a really sunny day you may have problems there but don't, don't, don't word me for that because I haven't tried it yet it's quite overcast here at UK at the moment I'm going a little bit fast so let's just slow down no one behind us still sort of struggling to see any cars behind me with these side mirrors We're in a 50 zone. This wagon's going far too quick for a 50 zone. And we need to just get in front of him. Obstructing my view. Right, okay, back in left lane. No problem with overtaking on this, it's got so much power that even in fifth gear, you pull that throttle back, you can overtake absolutely no problem at all. We are in sport mode. Could have done with just trying, uh, you know, a different mode really. Can we do it while we're driving? Let's press the button and find out. We can. Right, we're in standard mode. Let's try that. Still got two bars of power there, so can't really tell. Rain mode, right, we've got one bar of power, full traction. 
still sounds great, you can feel that doesn't quite have as much torque. It doesn't have as much pull, you know what I mean? So that's great, you can change mode while you're riding. It's going to use the mode. What we've got there, full power, add uh, one bar of traction. Just feels like sport mode to me. Sport, standard, rain mode. I don't know, I'm not going to lie, you sort of hard pressed to see to sort of feel the difference, you know, at lower speeds I'm sure when you got to the high, higher rev limit on uh, rain mode I think you'd find it sort of pulling back a little bit Put it back into user mode Nice little grumble there from that stock exhaust yeah, very, very nice. The kind of grumble that you'd only really get from aftermarket exhaust, you know. I think this is a 40 on here. We just come down this road. Yeah, it is 40 mile an hour. And we have a red light in front of us. Good time to sort of test these brakes a little bit. Yeah, that back brake is adequate. Too much revs again. I would literally just tickle them revs and let clutch out. I think that's probably the way to go, sort of on your flat road, you know, literally just a little tickle. Any more than a little tickle, it's uh, too much, really. Right, okay guys, we're pretty much back off our test ride now from Honda in Ilkley. Uh, so, first sort of thoughts and impressions uh, from being out on this uh, test ride today is, actually, I quite like this bike. It's <coughs> it's a very aggressive start of styling and, and position, but it's also, once you sort of sit into it and you, you like relax on it a little bit, it's quite comfy, you know, your hands your heart, arms are not too low, you know, or too high. Just for me, it feels good. My knees are sort of in a good position there, tucked at the side of the tank. Not tucked under the tank, as you would on some bikes, but sort of tucked right into the tank. So, yeah, um, really sort of enjoying that. Do I need to go straight on? Straight on, next left. Uh, yes, it's more... So, really, what, why would you buy this over the original CB1000R? Well, let's be honest, it's appearance, isn't it? Um, the CB1000 are the original one. They do come in a multi multi multitude of colours, but for me, this black just finishes it off nicely. Gives that sort of night rider appearance. A bit of the devil inside it. Um, I'm I'm really enjoying this little test ride. Would I buy it? Well, actually, I think I probably would. I'm not due for a bike yet. Uh, if I wanted a street naked. Out of all the street nakeds, I think it would uh, probably be this because I don't really like the look of the new, <coughs> the new Yamaha that's just come out. It's got like a weird front light on it, so I'm not too fussed about that. Suzuki GSX S1000 has just come out, a brand new model for 2021. Uh, we are going to go test ride that soon, so I'm not going to give my verdict on that yet. But so far, I think this would be my choice. Um, but you know, it's a great bike, it's plenty of torque, plenty of fun, and that's what it's about, it's about looking good, having fun, 
and uh, just enjoying what you buy. Like I said, it could do with a few bits, bar and mirrors, bit of a front screen. Absolutely great bike. So the daytime running lights do change the indicators when you click the indicator. And then once you click it off, it goes back to daytime running lights. It's a little bit weird seeing daytime running lights as indicators, not gonna lie. I've heard as well, if you do some emergency braking, it throws the hazards on automatically. I can't test that out today. Uh, also, I think the, one of the biggest points for this bike is they do have an app that does sat nav on the front of the screen. But unfortunately, the app is not for iPhone, it's only for Android users, which for me is a massive no-no right now. But other than that, everything else on the bike, I absolutely love. And here we are, we're back at Honda. So guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, share this around, share with your friends. And uh, if you want a test ride, come down to Honda at Ilkley. It's starting to rain here now. Oh, excuse me. Come down to Under at Ilkley and uh, test ride one of these bad boys out. Here we are, look. Straight into neutral first time. Kick stand down, engine off. <laughs> so there we are. Right, so don't forget guys, like, comment and subscribe. Peace!